Um, yeah, Kai, thank you um, uh, also for the, the examples that, that you have uh, given. Um, you mentioned uh, quite a few countries that uh, uh, were uh, uh, successful. Um, can you tell us a little bit, uh, maybe one or two examples, uh, what kind, I mean, uh, what did they do actually? What was the recipe uh, uh, to, to improve the situation? A recipe, um, golden bullets, um, and simple solutions. Yeah, um, you know that. I mean, honestly, one of the major lessons that comes out in each and every single case um, where people have been covered or where health coverage has, made, has been made universal is that more money is needed, more public money. This means that um, people don't have to pay. It doesn't mean that people do not have to pay, but it is all about changing the way that they are paying. And that, that means that um, more money has to be paid before people uh, fall sick, and that this money has to then be pooled um, by the public uh, in the in the public system, where um, where there is a where the risks of illness can be equalized, where the incomes of people um, do not play a role, but only the, the need for healthcare when people access it. Um, this is this is the only lesson I think that is really common to all, and only countries that have achieved to put a lot more money into the system um, from the um, from the public side have achieved that. And what we have typically seen is that um, it is important that um, there is a champion for this cause, that, the, that this topic is being taken up um, at a very high level. It is important that there is consensus between the different stakeholders um, involved in the system and that the, and that this consensus is actively built. That um, the that not one side that has an interest in it, like often the Ministry of Health, um, pushes it as a as its own agenda, but that it has to include others and take them with them on their way. That often means that you have to organize meetings where a lot of talking is being done. Um, it means exchanging opinions. It means dealing with all those uh, um, economists sitting in the ministries of finance and convince them that you, A, um, use the money well and that you need more money. All, and these two questions are interrelated. But at the same time, you also have to um, um, address issues with the, with the doctors. The doctors are often not the ones we're really pushing for um, increases in coverage because sometimes it may mean that um, they are forced to focus on parts of the population that um, is not able to pay so much. Um, so it's, it's bringing people um, to the table, talking with them, creating a consensus that then will enable you to, to pull through with your um, reforms. Thank you, Kai. We have some question around health insurance and the role of the ministries. But I would like to invite Zainab, whose hand I see, maybe to ask a question first to get another voice in the room. Zainab, can you unmute yourself to ask a question, please? Yes, hello, hello, I'm Zainab, and I come from Egypt. And, uh, my question is concerned with, uh, can you hear me first? Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is related to a local health problem in my country, but I think it has its own, it's, it has also its global perspective because Egypt has the highest rate of the bugs seen in the world, uh, as around 10% of the Egyptians are infected with this chronic disease. And the challenge with hepatitis C, which is currently unaffordable for most patients in need, 
is to ensure that every one can access them. And uh, the prices for the treatment remain unaffordable to most people in need for the treatment according to the WHO. And recently, there are two or three drugs uh, which have been approved by the WHO for the treatment of hepatitis C with a very high uh, success rate. But of course, the government at the current position in Egypt, it cannot, it cannot afford to cover these drugs. So how would we tackle this challenge from a global responsibility perspective? Thanks, Lina. Um, I'll try to say something on that, and then I'll come back to a couple of issues that I have picked up on the way um, that were um, mentioned in the chat that I have to have the time to look through now. Those include um, pharma, insurance, and the question of prevention or treatment. Um, the One of the things that um, we have to be aware of is that um, we are all in a, in a double role. We are in the health system as um, consumers of healthcare, as patients, as people needing care, but all of us are also in the system as paying for care. Um, I, I saw that very much when my wife moved with, uh, from, with me from Tanzania to, to Germany. And um, we started seeing on my, on my income um, slips that in, in Germany we pay 15.5% of, uh, of our income on health insurance. 15.5%. I mean, depending on how much you earn, that can be several hundred um, euros. So it is something where I think when we look at it from the perspective of the payer, we are also all um, quite aware that we have our own limits of how much we would like to pay. And in many cases, this is only one part of the problem, obviously. Um, in many um, countries, I don't know, 80% of the population is not even in a position to pay anything. So we, we have to be realistic in every country on what we can afford. This, you may say, is the typical view of an economist. Um, but I think everyone who is running an own household um, will agree that at the end of the day, this is what um, this, this will always hold true. At the same time, of course, there are many more ways of doing something. Um, I saw in the chat the criticism that a lot of governments only allocate around five percent of their um, expenditure to healthcare. That is typically not enough. Um, in a lot of rich countries, you see that not only 5% of the government budget, but around 8 to 10% of GDP, of the total production in the country, is allocated to healthcare. And this is just to give you an idea of, of, what, it can, of what it can cost. Um, so most countries actually have a lot of room to increase their expenditure. Um, if, um, if they can. Um, in the case of hepatitis, um, I can't really respond on, on any individual um, health problem because I don't have the information on others. Um, and I don't know exactly how, what percentage of the government budget goes to, goes to healthcare in Egypt. And if it is possible to, to increase it uh, to increase it to cover hepatitis. Um, and one issue I would always caution is to look at um, individual issues in isolation. Um, the, the huge focus over the last couple of years with the MDGs was on HIV AIDS and on malaria, but especially HIV AIDS. In many countries in the world, this is this is an absolutely right focus. A huge amount of people suffer from it. A large part of what we call the burden of disease and deaths is coming from it. 
but the global debate has also shifted um, the debate in some countries where HIV AIDS wasn't the biggest issue. And suddenly we find that because of also donor support, um, more than between 30 and 50 percent of the total health budget goes go into HIV AIDS, while the much bigger issues such as maternal health care um, and respiratory problems in many cases, diarrheal diseases, are not well addressed. Um, so it is always looking at which of the issues you, you, you want to address. Um, in this context, I would like to say something about insurance. Um, insurance is just a way to collect money. In systems where you have a large formal sector that can just pay, um, where you can just take part of the incomes of people as an insurance payment and just keep that in your um, in the budget. This can be a great way of um, of you, uh, of getting more, more funding in. Um, at the same time, any compulsory any any mandatory health insurance payment is also a tax at the end of the day. It's just handled by a different agent. Health insurance can be very good for creating mechanisms um, in the way of buying health care that is more related to what is actually being provided. Um, so you can increase efficiency in the system with it. Um, but in many places, insurance ha will have to focus on this part, getting the efficiency aside right. But in countries like Cameroon, for example, to expect that you have a lot of extra money through health insurance, I think this is unlikely to happen. If you create a health insurance, a lot of money will have to flow from the uh, finance budget into the health insurance to provide care. Pharma, well, in, in many countries, pharmaceuticals are bought at too high prices, which um, definitely has something to do with the pharma lobby. But um, a lot of issues have also, a lot of good things have happened in the, uh, over the last years, both in terms of generic um, production and also in terms of making branded products available at cheaper prices in the um, to poorer countries. So um, I wouldn't be the one who would um, go into kind of a, a pharma bashing um, here. And yes. Prevention is always better than treatment. It's usually much cheaper and and helps a lot. And getting incentives into the system for um, using more preventative care and promotive care is something that is a real challenge. Um, yeah, I'll stop. Thank you, Karen. I would again like to encourage participants to, I think we do have time for one or two more questions. And if you raise your hand and we'll bring your question directly in, that would be appreciated. And the mic goes to Kiel, but we will have space for another question afterwards. Wait, uh, Kiel, no? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, the can you hear me? Is yours. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, great. Um, yes, I want, would like to ask if there are any proposals for um, global or at least international um, mechanisms to provide access to healthcare. Um, the background of my question is that um, I personally um, am implementing a mechanism to uh, channel part of my money to the victims of climate change because I am still um, using fossil fuels even though uh, renewable energies are available so when I buy gasoline I, I pay something into a fund and this fund um, goes in part to the victims of climate change who are suffering from the burning of those fossil fuels and um, obviously uh, one of the priorities is for people to save their lives to save their health and so on so I personally am willing to um, to uh, give part of what I have because I'm a rich person um, who has all the food and all the things necessary for life 
um, and send it to uh, to poorer countries and poorer places. Uh, are there any bigger scale mechanisms implemented by governments or other institutions that would work in such a sense? Um, well, there's, there's a lot of ways that, um, that, that you can help. I mean, a lot of private um, NGOs, a lot of private charities are engaging in, 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 in improving healthcare in, in countries. Um, I don't know if you've heard about the Global Fund against AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. Um, this is something that um, where um, where a lot of money is flowing into countries for these three different diseases, um, where um, if you buy certain products, for example, um, a small amount of money is being um, is, is going to the um, is, is going to help other countries. And um, over the last couple of years, um, over the last probably 10, 12 years, 15, um, global health assistance has been scaled up massively. Development assistance for health um, has seen something of a um, of a golden um, period. Um, it, uh, yeah, um, a lot of money has, has, has gone into it. Um, at the moment, we are at a stage where we where we need to sustain these these gains and where we need to try and protect protect um, the the different uh, to, to to protect this money. That it has been made available, um, and yeah, as individuals, um, pick your own cause. I mean, what you're saying is is great. You you, you do something that really um, helps directly a couple of people. Um, this is what um, charities are usually good at: showing you where your money goes, making it very personal. And um, from the side where I'm from, working with government money, we are then trying to improve the systems in countries that um, allow better care to reach everyone. And I think that's, that's quite, a, quite a good way. Um, one word on, on a comment I've seen um, about rich countries not even being able to organize their, their, their own systems in an equitable way. There, there is, something is wrong with every single um, health system in the world. Um, I myself am living in a system where rich people are allowed to opt out of their own system. I would never go to a, another country and tell people to copy the German system on, in this regard. It's an, it's, well, I'm voting in a way that um, I'm trying to change this, but um, there are still other issues. That still doesn't mean that um, there are not a whole lot of things that, that, that can be done and should be done on improving um, health finance systems all over the world and try to um, achieve greater equity. And there are a couple of lessons um, on how to do this um, that, that can be shared also from rich countries. Yeah, thank you, Kai. Um, I think um, that was um, a brilliant question from Kiel. Um, but besides the fact that it was interesting content-wise, I think uh, it is so helpful if if we can just share and and, and, and if, if if you just take over the mic and ask your questions. So uh, I would like to encourage you uh, once again before we uh, have to think about uh, the end of this webinar, just consider it again. Is there anything that you would like to share? I see in the in the chat there's many, many, many interesting questions. And uh, now there is still the opportunity. So um, have a second look at it and uh, consider if you, if you want to uh, ask a question to, to Kai or maybe also to me. If you want to do so, just press on the icon uh, in the upper left side uh, that shows, an hand, shows a hand and that uh, shows us that you're having a question.
Okay. So, um, of course, there's still uh, the, the, the possibility. Ah, there's Kiel coming again. Yes, uh, Kiel, you know already how to unmute yourself. Please speak. Yes, I do. Thanks. Um, I don't want to take up too much space, but I, um, I came here today with, uh, because I'm very much interested in universal healthcare because on the one hand side, I am working here in Mexico with um, um, indigenous communities on um, community health and we uh, have very uh, down-to-earth um, challenges there in, in promoting um, uh, health. And on the other hand, um, I'm, I have always been working uh, a lot on climate change and um, if you have been following um, the issue a little bit, you know that we are already in big trouble and that a huge crisis uh, is coming. And um, in the in the long run, um, the the issue really is um, survival for, for some countries and for lots of people who will be starving to death and so on. So, um, from thinking from this perspective of the um, uh, climate crisis that will be getting worse and worse, um, the way I look at it is that uh, we that this this is an opportunity for us as a human family um, to to grow closer together and this will involve looking after the weakest um, elements of our family and um, ensuring their survival so um, a vision that I have for uh, say let's say a, a positive outcome um, of this climate crisis is that we would come together and say okay uh, we are a family and we have to we have the means and we have uh, the duty to ensure the survival of everybody. So I think that this is very um, closely related to the question of universal health coverage because it would need some um, mechanisms to implement that, to make sure that every child in Africa has safe drinking water, that every child in India uh, has enough food for, uh, for, for being healthy, for developing well, and um, that's that's what brings me here with the question on how 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 could we um, organize the logistics of um, of really um, living up to that challenge because the means are there. If you look at military budgets, um, there's so much money in that. If you look at budgets for advertising, uh, there's so much money, and even the pharmaceutical industry, there's so much money going around there. I think the logistics of providing clean water and um, prevention of uh, lots of different diseases and cure for lots of diseases, I think the, the, uh, the logistics can be figured out. Um, I guess the, um, the challenge right now is uh, are the social and economic dynamics within our societies, how can we generate such mechanisms and um, and, and make them grow. So that's that's um, that's my 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 vision and my questions that I bring to the table today. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think this really um, yeah this is this is a very important question. It's a big one actually. Uh, certainly a question that uh, we cannot let's say answer uh, sufficiently uh, like that in a. Uh, not only in a webinar, but, but principally, principally, I think this is something that has to be developed because, as you say, uh, the potential is there, obviously. Um, so what can we do um, to make it available uh, for uh, uh, the things that we think uh, are necessary to do? This is actually maybe also an opportunity to bring the leadership uh, uh, question back uh, on the table because this is actually something that requires uh, leadership. And um, I would say um, we probably don't have a, a concrete answer on how to do it exactly, but um, our leadership approach and the way we work uh, might, might help to find answers. Like, mm, I think also from what Kai was telling before about, about universal healthcare, we can see it is about systems. It is about systems where different stakeholders have different uh, interests and different needs. And there are often is kind of a silo uh, mentality. Um, so 
uh, people, different stakeholders, uh, they stay in their silos, there is little communication, there is little exchange, there is also little collaboration. And yeah, when, when I hear you uh, uh, posing a question, Kiel, and when you refer to climate change and to all these mega issues um, that on the one hand are global issues, but on the other hand have a local impact on every, each and every one of us, I would say that yeah, this is the reason why we try really to foster collaboration and exchange of, uh, in multi-stakeholder systems. And you might remember from, from uh, the MOOC uh, when we were presenting the, the, the competency domains that social innovation is another competency domain that we think is important. Um, if we find a way, um, if we find a way to pr improve the situation about uh, social health care, this will certainly be linked with social innovation, um, like uh, innovations that help to improve um, living conditions or mechanisms in, 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 in societies. Um, what else can I say? Um, also transformation somehow here matters because if we talk about climate change and these uh, mega issues, we know it is not about incremental change. Uh, it's uh, not about fixing it. We won't make it probably with a fixed mentality and we have to really dig deep and go into transformation. And this is actually also how we try to uh, do it in this universal health coverage, coverage uh, leadership program that we have been mentioning, uh, which is still in the, in the process of being designed. Um, we would like to share more about that, uh, but maybe we bring this um, on a different so to say, stage of the MOOC, because we didn't want to um, bore you too much with presentations and wanted to give more room to your questions. So what I would propose now is um, yeah, to slowly come uh, uh, to a wrap up. Um, and I would say, I mean, I would say for me this webinar it was a very interesting start somehow um, into exploring uh, the sector topic of universal health coverage. I think it was uh, on the one hand Kai's expertise, but on the other hand your questions um, that made it uh, 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 that made it worth really uh, uh, participating. And I was really like stunned how many questions there were. Um, in the chat and Guy really did his best to pick out as much as he could in the given time but I'm sure there's many 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 questions that we could not relate to so but what we certainly will do is um, we will publish the whole chat log so that you on the one hand uh, can see all the questions we will uh, put that on the MOOC platform and then the question is what are we going to do with it so maybe um, it is interesting for some of you, for example, to yeah to continue uh, uh, the dialogue. You could also uh, start a peer group on that. You know that you can start your own peer groups on the MOOC, and I think um, yeah, if there's people who would like to do so, we would certainly support. I'm sure that we could also find more people uh, who would take part in such an initiative. But this would have to be done uh, 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 by you, the participants from the MOOC. Um, yeah, so, but the good thing about it is it is all possible. We just have to start it and then uh, uh, we can continue this sending journey uh, that we just started about the topic of universal health coverage. Karen, mm, I would like to pass the word, um, the word to you. I think... Uh, we have also prepared kind of a, 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 of a question that we that we can share now and uh, uh, use to give uh, our participants again uh, uh, the opportunity to contribute to to, to this dialogue. Karen, I'm passing the microphone to you now. Great, thank you so much. Um, I didn't promise any 
any concrete answers at the, at the beginning. So I hope that I that it wasn't too big a disappointment that I didn't um, give you like the, the answer that you that you may have been looking for. Um, I I really appreciate that um, the interest that came up and like personally I would like to encourage everyone to pick um, health and social protection as their um, field of activity of choice. It's a very it's an incredibly rewarding pro, um, field of work. You work really for people, um, even if you're working often with administrations. But it is something that is absolutely useful. And um, in my own work, I have come to see that often change is not as fast and as big to happen as we as we would like to see it. We continue pushing for it. Um, to, to make that incremental change happen, and then this is kind of what we what, what what we manage to do at any given time, and then we just continue, like never let the never give up and just continue pushing, and this is kind of what I would like to encourage everyone of you in joining joining me and my colleagues in the P4H network at the GIZ to do. Okay, thank you, Kai. So, um, as usual, we are working here live on stage. Um, I am not quite sure where we are. Uh, we are actually uh, close to the checking out. Um, I wonder if there is still something that we can uh, bring uh, into the chat. Is there um, another question uh, that has been prepared? I think so, yes. Um, it is. I tried to activate it. Here we are. Um, I think um, it is time, uh, on the one hand, um, to uh, slowly say goodbye and say thank you to everybody. But before we really let's say uh, leave this room, I would like to ask you and please give your answers in the chat within a few words. What stood out for you? What are you taking home when you're looking back? and this webinar that you all have been participating in. So please um, give us a feedback that we really will consider and bring into uh, our next activities. How did you like this webinar and what stood out for you? What are you taking home? Karen, I see that you are unmuting yourself. Um, please. Thanks, Klaus. Yes, I, I also wanted to, to thank everybody in the room, especially you, and kind of remind you to, to the question you brought in before. Um, as this week is designed to reflect to which of those leadership issues your leadership challenge is connecting. And I think in Kiel's case, it was very obvious, this very strong connection. So maybe you can also take a question home with you or uh, to reflect how this leadership challenge in health resonates with your personal leadership challenge. And there's also the invitation to share your thoughts in peer groups, but also we do have a forum for that. And it would be wonderful if you share your thoughts here in the chat. But also check uh, in the MOOC space, in the forum, um, maybe conduct a dialogue interview with someone you see, have seen here in the webinar, because in the chat log, you will also see all the names of the people here. So you can also just get in touch uh, with someone you would like to connect more deeply and explore on the issue and the challenges. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Karen. Uh, so it's probably me uh, who has the last word. Um, and uh, while you please just stay uh, uh, answering the question because we really like it to see uh, um, how the whole uh, uh, session um, how you uh, how you liked it and, and what you are taking home um, i just uh, briefly uh, remind you where we are now before doing so there's a big thank you that goes out to all the people who uh, participated and contributed to this webinar there was Kai, 
who uh, uh, was our sector expert today. Big hands to you, Kai. Karen uh, did the co-moderation with me. Thanks, Karen. Susanna, our colleague uh, in the background, uh, she had to collect the questions and uh, she made the work of Kai and Karen and me much easier by supporting us uh, in that way. And of course, all the participants, uh, we have been 24, 25 uh, during uh, the webinar. It was actually you who made the whole thing possible because if you would have not joined, the whole thing would have made any sense. So please um, stay tuned. Um, we are really looking forward to seeing you soon wherever you are on our MOOC. Um, the program now is, um, yeah, as Karen said, consider to do a dialogue interview and share your thoughts in the leadership forum and do some leadership journaling. And the next event will be on Friday the 11th. Um, water so resources so management. Oh, sorry. That's a mistake. Oh, the something not right. Already, not right. Uh, what can then already <laughs> is tomorrow. So, tomorrow. Ah, the next event is tomorrow. Um, I got lost somehow because I'm traveling. Uh, do you know, Karen, uh, what are we going to do tomorrow? What's the next event? Ah, Susanna. Susanna says, urban challenges. Susanna, why don't you unmute yourself? I think you know a little bit about that uh, uh, event and announce it to our participants. Sure. I can unmute yourself. Yeah, just um, to remind you, because the next webinar will be already tomorrow, and this is uh, on our topic, Urban Challenges. And we have Peter Gott as our urban expert, and Josette Cole from South Africa. So this will be at uh, 3, 3 o'clock German time, what is 1 p.m. UTC time. You can check it on the MOOC space, there you find the announcement. So not on Friday, it will be tomorrow. And on Friday, we will have two webinars. So one is what you see at the moment, water resource management. And there will be another one on climate change with uh, Hermann Otto from the Wuppertal Institute at um, half past two to two Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. So we see uh, this MOOC is something we do live and um, it is alive and kicking as well with many, many, many offers, many, many uh, beautiful participants who make the whole MOOC uh, success. And this is the last thing I would like to share with you. Um, on my business trip, I just met um, Otto Schama and Peter Wenger, these two um, highly renowned experts, and they are so fascinated by our MOOC. They really support us and uh, just want to share with you, there's many people looking at our MOOC and sometimes I think what we actually do is uh, social innovation live and again it's you uh, who are making it possible it's actually us uh, making it possible the whole new community okay thank you very much it was a sheer pleasure uh, uh, to facilitate this meeting um, yeah hope to see you soon on our MOOC bye bye